Hello and welcome everyone to Moments of Meditation. I am Reverend Philip Cousin. I'm the pastor of St. Andrew's AME Church in Sacramento, California. We thank you for tuning in to us today. And we pray that this message, today's worship, will be a blessing to you. We will begin now with a selection by our own Mr. Carlos Fuentes, and we will be followed with the prayer and scripture reading by the Reverend Dr. Deborah Long Burroughs.
Amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and all wise God, we have every reason to thank you because you truly are the source of our strength. God, we thank you that regardless of what we go through in this world, we are able to call upon your righteous and majestic name and you do take care of us. God, we thank you that you have allowed us to come down to the beginning of another week. We thank you that you have allowed us another opportunity to get it right with you and to let your word go forth. God, we see your hand moving across this nation. God, we thank you that people are coming forth, the family of number 45, letting the world know what kind of person he is. Thank you, God, for allowing persons to want this United States to come back to its moral compass, to be concerned about everyone and to do what is right. And God, we ask your hand to move upon those persons who are trying very hard to keep people from voting. God, that is the core of our democracy, but we continue to pray. We know that you hold the palm of this world in your hands and all we have to do is to stay fervent in prayer and trust you and you will make every little bit of thing all right. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you for persons, God, whom you have seen fit to call home to glory. Because God, we know that you prepared a place for them and that there is joy with you and we will see our loved ones again. God, continue to bless the world. Continue to bless this nation. God, continue to help people to understand the necessity of social distancing, the need for wearing a mask. God, the need for returning to you. Because God, you made us in your image and we are supposed to be your disciples. And the only way that we can be your disciples is to live as you live, love you first, and treat our neighbors and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Continue to bless all pastors across the land. We pray especially for that pastor in the Philippines who asked for prayer. God, lift him up on every leaning side. We pray for our first family, God. Protect Danielle, protect Carlos, protect our pastor, protect his grandchildren, protect his mother and his father. God, just let no harm befall them because we know that evil is in the world. But your word tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities in high places. And God, we recognize and thank you that there are other people still protesting because they know that systemic racism is alive and well. But God, we know that you are the protector of all protectors. And we bind all forces of evil up and cast them out in the matchless name of Jesus. Be with us in this worship service. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we say thank you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is in the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and I will be reading verses 25 through 34 from the King James Version of the Bible. That's Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, 
that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen and amen. And thank you very much, Reverend Burroughs, for that prayer and for the reading of that scripture. And now as we would prepare for today's meditation, we're going to ask Mr. Carlos Fuentes to please favor us with another selection.
Amen and amen. Thank you very much, Carlos, for that. I want to invite your attention now, once again, to the scripture that was read in your hearing from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 25 through 34. I want to read again verses 30. 31 through 33. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For to all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We want to address for the next few moments the topic, the problem with our priorities. The problem with our priorities. Jesus is ending the midway point of his Sermon on the Mount. Here in this sixth chapter, Jesus concludes with a discussion of priorities. The things of, about which we worry are not the things which are of concern to Jesus and neither then should they be of such concern to us. Take no thought is a very formal way of saying, don't worry about it. Jesus tells those hearers, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you are going to wear. The problem with our priorities is just that. They are our priorities. Jesus tells his hearers to seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else comes in second, and it comes in a distant second. The problem with our priorities is that we seek first after things. The problem with our priorities is we have equated things with and even placed seeking things above our seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, Jesus did not say these things do not matter. Jesus says, our Heavenly Father knows full well that we have need of all of these things. No, what Jesus simply says is that the kingdom of God matters more. What is it that Jesus was trying to accomplish by these words? Well, Jesus was trying to get those who would follow him to see the reality of the kingdom of God in brand new ways. Jesus wanted then and wants now for his followers to understand that there is tangible evidence of the reality of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is real. And the reality of the kingdom is us. The kingdom of God is then more than a place. The kingdom of God is a state of being. We are in the kingdom of God when the kingdom of God is in us. 
personal conduct. Personal conduct determines entry into the kingdom. And we will enter the kingdom when the kingdom enters us. This is the inextricable entwinement of belief and behavior. The two are irrevocably connected. We must behave like we believe. We must be very clear on this. We cannot expect to live our lives any kind of way and expect to see the kingdom of God. Understand? Can I make you see this? The answer is no. Jesus also tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. And those who would see the reality of the kingdom is to see a reality that is first born in them. Jesus tells that we are to seek the rule of the kingdom. The kingdom is more than a place and even more than a state of being. Kingdom means reign. Kingdom means rule. The heart is a throne. And someone is going to sit there. Someone is going to sit on the throne of our heart. And from there, they will rule our life. We decide who that is going to be. For us, it creates a bit of personal conflict. We cannot pray thy kingdom come and mean it until we can say in our living, my kingdom go and mean it. This is to seek the rule of the kingdom. It is to understand that we cannot sit on the throne of our own hearts. How many times have we, in trying to make all of the decisions for our lives, messed things up horribly? No. If someone is to sit on the throne of our living, that someone has got to be the God who made us for he is also the God who knows what is best for us. See the reality of the kingdom. Seek the reality of the kingdom. It's rule. And then my sisters and brothers, let us show the righteousness of the kingdom. When we seek the control of the king over us, that is rule. We will then be seeking the character of the king within us. That is righteousness. Righteousness is such a wonderful word. It means right standing. We cannot bring ourselves into right standing before God. That is why we thank God for Jesus. For by him, we have a way to come into right standing before God. The righteousness, the right standing of the kingdom within us is about conduct, 
and it is about character. If the kingdom of God is about conduct, and it is, then righteousness is about character. The two are important. It is why Jesus said the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not its righteousness. And this is one of the more misquoted verses in all of the Bible. The scripture does not say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The righteousness is not of the kingdom of God. The righteousness is of God. Let me make that plain. The righteousness belongs to God. The righteousness does not belong to the kingdom. Do we get it? The righteousness is his. It is God's. It is the kingdom of God that we are to seek and his righteousness. That which belongs to him. And until we can show that we possess and are possessed by the righteousness of God, until we can show by character and demonstrate by conduct who rules us, we will never be able to make a difference in the world. We will never be able to make a difference in the world unless and until the world sees that a difference has been made in us. See the kingdom, seek the kingdom, show the righteousness of the kingdom in us. And then Jesus subtly admonishes his followers to share about the ruler of the kingdom. This is how we extend the good news. We extend the good news by extending the news about the ruler of the kingdom. It is our calling and it is our task. And it is one we should be about with joy. God gives us in Christ Jesus the good news that is ours to share. Here is a simple truth. If Jesus is worth knowing, Jesus is worth loving. And if Jesus is worth loving, Jesus is worth serving. And if Jesus is worth serving, then Jesus is worth sharing. Share the good news about the ruler of the kingdom. Fall in step with the apostle born out of time. One born Saul of Tarsus who came to be known to us as Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul would later write, share the good news that one day and that day is coming. At the sound of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. We can look back, we can look upon those 
religions of the world. And we do not denigrate them. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge the mastery of Jesus over them. When Paul wrote that every knee will bow, that means Muhammad had to bow. When Paul wrote that every knee will bow, that means Buddha had to bow. When Paul wrote, every knee will bow, that means we must bow. You must bow. I must bow. Every knee, because every knee means everybody. Everybody will bow. When we share the good news about the ruler of the kingdom, we encourage and admonish people because people need to know that now is the time to bow to Jesus as Lord. Failure to do so will mean to have to bow to him later as judge. That is news worth sharing. Bow down now and accept Jesus as Lord, do not wait until the day when all will bow down and accept him as judge. See the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. Show the kingdom of God and then share the kingdom of God. It is critical for we find ourselves living in critical times. We who call ourselves people of faith face the entrenched resistance of the reprobate will. It is exemplified all around us today by people who refuse to do something as simple as wear a mask even in the face of a pandemic that is proving fail. We face the embittered cynicism of the modern mind. Those whose misplaced notions of presumptive authority lead them to usurp power that is not theirs by either privilege or right. It is to these that with the utmost urgency, we need to preach pursuit of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It helps to set our priorities in perspective. It corrects the problem with our priorities. There may be someone under the sound of my voice today who has a life that is a roadmap of messed up priorities. We can get you on the right road and set you on the street called straight. All you have to do today is to open wide the doors of your living, beckon Jesus to come and sit on the throne of your heart. My favorite apostle tells me that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And that is all that it takes to be established on the path that leads into the kingdom of God because you have established a path for the kingdom of God to enter you. If you are in need of a church home and everyone needs a church home, so let me say it this way. If you don't have a place where you regularly go to church when church regularly meets, 
then you need to find a church home. When churches begin to open again physically, St. Andrews will swing open wide her doors. And we invite you to come and worship with us. We invite you to be a part of St. Andrews now, our virtual congregation, our virtual gathering and coming together of people of faith. If you are a part of this broadcast, you can consider yourself to be a part of the family of St. Andrews right now, regardless as to how many other families you may also claim. And we are very happy to have you. Our prayer is that today's broadcast will be a blessing in your life that it will help you to understand the things that we worry about really are not things that need worrying about. When you sort your life into two piles, you will find that the pile of things over which you have no control is always going to be larger than the pile of things over which you do. And so why not give that larger pile of things over to the one whose hands are large enough to be able to hold not only them, your concerns, but also you. Discover the joy of the truth of Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things these other things shall be added unto you. Don't you worry about them. If you would like to make a contribution to this broadcast, we encourage you today to go to Giblify and find us, St. Andrew's Amy Church. You can find us on Giblify and make your contribution there. Or you can text St. Andrew's AMEC to 73256. You can find us on Givelify. And you can make your contribution there. Or you can text St. Andrew's AMEC to 73256 follow the simple directions and make a contribution that will not only help this broadcast to continue, but will also help to ensure that when churches are able to open again physically, we will be there in that number. Thank you again now for visiting with us today and for sharing your time with us. Share this message in your social media. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. That is a part of the responsibility of those who seek to be ruled by kingdom rule. As is our custom, we ask our own Mr. Carlos Fentes if you would please kindly play us out with what has become our theme selection, God is Good, by Jonathan McReynolds. And we pray that God bless and keep you until we come together again.
is our prayer for you. May your bad days prove that God is good. May your whole life prove that God is good. This is Mr. Carlos Fuentes, the Reverend Dr. Deborah Long Burroughs, and Reverend Philip Cousin, bidding God bless you and keep you. Stay safe, socially distanced, wear your mask and be blessed.